in the United States of America, uh, Herod Pedro Costa. So, uh, we will be looking at a wide range of issues here, ranging from the um, uh, the recast budget, the uh, CPP uh, coming together, yeah, yeah, wide range of issues that Costa said his video dropped, so he's trying to restart the video. So, wherever you are, welcome. And uh, yeah, wide range of issues that we say we'll be talking about. And all you have to do, just uh, sit back and relax as we uh, bring you the uh, happenings from both home and abroad. So, uh, yesterday. What's the, news, what's the news in town, Baga? Yeah, it's all about the. Uh, the sunny ceremony of the uh, four collaborating political parties. That's the major news in town. And secondly, the recast budget that was sent to the uh, House. And that's another one there. So those are just the trending news now in the country. Oh, okay. Um, I can understand that. All right. I just uh, uh, started a brand new video. And uh, uh, the judge refreshed the apps. Yeah, yeah, everything is up and working. All oh, right, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, um, um, understandably, these are the issues that are important to people. Uh, lots of people are very excited uh, that uh, this is what's hap happening. And uh, we thank God for that the CPP has finally been able to close this deal. Uh, yesterday, uh, the ceremony happened, and uh, and and it's it's a beautiful thing. If yeah. you if you ask me, it is uh, for them to come together. But before we go there, Baka, I just have a few things I would like to do. You know, me, and my people are very important to me. Sure. And uh, it's all about them that we do what we do. Uh, one of our strongest supporters uh, celebrates her birthday today. And Sister Diana Chelsea uh, Tebley, uh, she is of the COP Europe chapter. Uh, Diana celebrates her birthday today, May the 20th. And uh, uh, I just want to say to Diana, I, I, you know, I. I like I often say, as I often say, I feel so blessed that so, so many of these people, uh, they, 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 they've become more than just uh, listeners to the Costa Show. There are a, there, there are the pillow upon which we stand. Uh, it is on their shoulders that we stand. Wonderful, amazing people like Diana, uh, Chelsea, Tebley. And, and, and they love their country. And the only reason why they support us is because they love their country. And as I often say, that is what it has to be about. It has to be because of your country and not because of Costa. Because Costa is a human being who is flawed and who is frail. He can't make mistakes. And as I often said, whenever I make a mistake, you know, as I, as, as I say to you, I have been going through... Uh, a transformative process and uh, it is a beautiful transformative process you know and, and and I encourage you and I want to thank all of you for helping you know to bring us where we are and 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 helping to set us straight and speak the truth to us and this is how it has to be I don't encourage any of our friends our supporters to be sick of sick offense I encourage you to be people who look me straight up in the eye and tell me the truth. You can go on Facebook. You can criticize me. You can say whatever. You know, that is how it should be. And so today we celebrate one of our people, Sister Diana Chelsea Tebley. She celebrates her birthday today. She's a member of COP Europe. And I want to say to you, Diana, happy, happy birthday to you. You celebrate today. We appreciate you this on behalf of all of the COP folks. We appreciate you for all of your support to our movement, to every one of you, every one of you out, out, out there. You know, without you, we are nothing. God first and you. Without you, we are nothing. And so we are grateful to you. And uh, I also want to do this as a happy birthday treat 
Her 15th birthday treat. She's got many, many more years to go by the grace of God. Many, many more years, years to go. Young Miss uh, Lila Kishan uh, from your father, uh, Mr. Monil Kishan. He's a big, he's a big, big brother. I have a, I have, I've got a lot of respect for him. Uh, he loves his country. And, uh, uh, and uh, Monil Kishan, a.k.a. the general. Uh, he asked me to do this for his 15, uh, his 15 year old daughter who turns, uh, well, his 15 year old daughter who turns 15 today, of course, obviously. And her name is Lila Kishan. Wonderful. Thing. And every one of you, every one of you who celebrates today and it's, 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 it's an important day for you. Uh, if, if your family is going through a difficult moment right now, I just want to say uh, I, I, I seek and I beseech the Lord's intervention. May his light shine upon you. Uh, may, he, uh, may he lift his countenance upon you or your loved one. Who, uh, If you have a relative in a hospital and somebody is going through COVID-19, and I just want to say to you, have faith, be prayerful, and, and may God touch you. May his healing power uh, uh, bring you relief. And, and that is my prayer for you. You know, uh, one of my biggest prayers, I, I, I pray for my friends. I pray for even my enemies because the... The Bible says that we should pray for our enemies. And one of the things I often say when I'm praying for my enemy is, 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 is I say, may God grant my enemies long life. Okay? So that they live to see the will of God. Sure. God's divine plan for my life made manif manifest. You know, sometimes some people pray for their enemies to, to die. I don't pray for my enemies to die. I pray for those who hate me. For whatever reasons that they hate me. May they live long. To see God work wondrous, wondrous things in my life. So that they be put to shame. So that the name of the Lord be glorified. That is what I pray for my enemies. That is what I pray. And so I want to say to every one of you. Keep being a good person. Don't stop being good because people do not appreciate your good. There are some people whose lives, one way or the other, we've touched. God has used us one way or the other to touch somebody's life. And, and some of those people turn on us. They show ingratitude. You know, they become jealous and envious and they think that they can tear us down. It, it doesn't make me better. You know, I just look at those people and I just keep moving. I just keep moving. Don't stop being a good person because one person or two persons or many people uh, put a bad taste in your mouth when you did good for them. Remain true to yourself. Be true. Because God will always bless you. God will always bless you. Remain true. Don't carry mileage in your heart. It is difficult. It is a difficult thing. Sometimes as a human being, you want to be vengeful. You want, you want, you want to be bitter. Oh, but I assure you, it is not worth it. Just keep being who you are. That is what you ought to do. So folks, I want to say good morning. Welcome to all of you wonderful folks, wherever you are. Every, every time I go to bed and I wake up each morning and I just say, God, thank you. Thank you for another wonderful day, especially a day that I am up and I'm alive and I can find food to eat and, 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 and have these dreams that I have. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you've made me. Thank you for bringing me thus far. Thank you. I know you're still molding me. That is my prayer. Now, folks, you know, I want to say this. Um, obviously, Boaka, we will talk about the recast budget. I mean, I did, mm -hmm. a, I did a podcast yesterday about it. We're going to do more. Uh, we're we're going to do more about it. I just want to say this. Can I person tell him my respect, the president? You don't know what, 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 what respect is. God himself gets angry. And I'm a Christian, and I know. I'm a firm believer in God. And the Bible says in the scripture, I can't remember exactly what scripture, it says, children obey thy parents for thy days shall be long. In that same scripture, the Bible goes further to say, parents, this is a part of the scripture that they, they, most preachers don't like to preach. Parents, do not exasperate thy children. Do not provoke thy children. That is the Bible. 
It is not cost that I said. It is the Holy Bible. Do not make your children angry. Because when they get angry, you will feel their wrath. And so while the Bible says we should obey our parents, the Bible also says our parents should not provoke us to anger. It is what the Bible says. So just because you are a president and you steal, you should not be told you are rogue because you're president. To hell, to hell with you. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, went into the temple, got angry when he saw men committing a most sacrilegious act in the temple, conducting corrupt business. What did he do? Jesus became angry and he broke their tables. He kicked them out. And so, I say to you, folks, I want to share something with you this morning, folks. Just listen to what I'm about to share with you. We have a long way to go in our country. A hell of a long way to go. There are some of us who are content with the way things are. Some of us are saying, no, 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 Costa. You can't challenge the status quo. Who are you to ask political leaders? You're just some 37-year-old talk show host. Who are you to demand that before you support a political leader and they must sign, they must sign a social contract? Who are you? But what they don't know is that this Costa is enlightened. What they don't know is that this caster has an independent mentality. What they don't know is that this caster has broken himself free from the shackles of mental slavery. I am emancipated. Emancipated. I understand that I have the right to want better. I understand that my country has been bad all these years because many of us, the people who put these people on our shoulders, we refuse to demand what's right. To demand what's for us. But this Henry Costa. If you want a submissive Henry Costa. I'm sorry. He is not here. If you want a Costa. Who is going to be a foot soldier. I'm sorry. Maybe you had him two, three years ago. But this Henry Petro Costa today. He is not a foot soldier. He is not a submissive soldier. He will ask questions. He will support. But he will ask questions. He will demand answers. He will demand commitment from you. This Henry Costa. This is a new version. Costa 2.0. This Costa has been upgraded. This Costa will ask questions. This Costa will make demands. And if you are satisfied with the way you are, with the way things are in the country, that political leaders or that politicians are gods and they cannot be asked questions, it is okay. That is your business. But you and I are not in our business. What I don't understand, Boakai, that some people get irritated that you speak even for yourself in your individual capacity. If you say you want to eat uh, palm butter, and they will ask you, Boakai, why the hell should you say you want to eat palm butter? Why don't you just eat whatever they give you? Why don't you just eat whatever they give you? Who the hell are you to tell me what I should accept? Who the hell are you to tell me to fall in line? Who the hell are you to tell me to be submissive? Who the hell are you to tell me not to demand what is right? Who the hell are you to tell me to continue to think the exact same way we've been thinking for 173 years that's made this country the way it is? Who the hell are you to tell me not to be progressive in my thoughts? Who the hell are you? This brand new Costa 2.0 will ask questions. This brand new Costa will demand answers. This brand new Costa will demand a commitment. This brand new Costa will not be submissive. Because this Costa is fed up with the way his country has been run. This Costa is fed up with hearing his brothers and sisters cry every day. This Costa is tired with the disillusionment. This Costa is tired with the rhetoric of the politicians. This Costa is fed up. This Costa wants to leave the radio. This Costa wants to us help usher in a real democracy accountable to the, to the people. This Costa refuses to accept that government after government should continue to write us a bad check. This Costa will not accept that. So I am not your Costa of yesterday. I am not your Costa of 2017. I am the Costa of 2020. And the Costa going into 2023, this Costa will ask questions. This Costa will demand answers. This Costa wants something new. This Costa will settle for nothing less. You take it or you leave it. But I am a brand new Costa. Costa 2.0. 
politics has always been about a few people. Look at the system. John Brown becomes president. His children are okay. They go to Harvard. They go to Yale. They go to Cornell. They drive the best cars. Their friends are okay. They wore the contracts to their Lebanese friends or their, or, or their Indian friends. My, my, I come from a village where no generation, no one in my generation, several generations, has been to college. And that has to change. That has to change. The country must change. The country needs to work for everyone. And that is what I demand. That Liberia must work for everybody. Liberia must work for Boca Kamara. Liberia must work for Henry Costa. Liberia must work for every citizen. This cannot be about the individuals that we elect. It has to be for once. For once in our miserable national existence, it must be about the people. Every time you go and vote, we heard the seditions when they came to power. Baka, what did they say? Our time. For me, 2023 has to be the people's time. Let politics for once matter to the people. Let pol politics for once change the people's life. Let's po let pol politics for once be about the people. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you love your country, if you mean well, stand with me and let's together demand that this is a system that we want, one that is accountable to you. And if anybody tells you who the hell you are to demand a political leader to sign onto a petition, onto a commitment, onto a con contract, maybe they do not know their history, maybe they do not know political science, because I know somewhere I've read that Jean Jacques Rousseau, the David Thoreau, beautifully, be beautifully articulated the principle of social contract. That when you vote for a politician, he commits himself mm -hmm. to provide certain basic social services to enhance your life. To create an environment where you can thrive and prosper. That is the principle of social contract. And so I want to say, I, I, I want to make this real. I want to literally draw up one and we can present it and we can say you will sign this. And if anybody tells you that you've got no right to demand that of a politician, do you know people have caught me? Act, act, actually, a few, a few people, while the majority of our people are saying, this is the good thing, we're going to make them sign this thing. Now, we know it is not enforceable under the law. If and when they become president and the default, there's no way we're gonna, we are going to enforce it. But what those people who have called me to say, Costa, Costa, you have to not be like that. Costa, you, you can't spoil this thing for us. Because those people, all they want, Bokai, is when Joe Blow comes to power, they want a job. Costa doesn't want a job. They, they don't want to rock the boat. They want to keep the system as it is. So one government after the other. And you've got two groups of people. The older people who get the, the lion's share and the, and the younger ones who, who get the assistant minister, deputy minister, director. And they feel proud because for them now, their life is about to change. That is not what I want. I don't need a government job for my life to change. God took me from poverty years ago and he lifted me to be where I am. And he gave me this voice of mine and he said to me, and I know it because if it were not so, I would not be where I am. Go ye forth, be that voice. Help to bring about change in your country. That is my calling. And I will not compromise that. That is what they want. I know many of them, they call me. Oh, Costa, you know, yeah, my man, you can't, you can't spoil this thing for us. You know, my man, you got to be careful what you, what you say. Yeah, the way you're talking, the way you're talking. Costa, the way you're talking now, huh? my man, you know, we got to, we got to get it to you, my man. <laughs> my man, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? You think I want any damn job? We want to count, we want to count ac accountability. I want my country to change. I want to leave the radio in 2023. I'm tired fighting. Eight years now, being shot at, chased across into a foreign country, being, being detained in a foreign country, facing possible extradition, going to jail, having my relationship shut down, taking my bread and butter out of my mouth, government going after me. I'm tired of living this life. I want a real government. One day, serves the people. I don't want to make a king. I don't want to be a part of that process. I want an accountable Decent government. I want to retire from the cost of show. 
That is what I want. So what did I understand, boy? Okay? They and Costa do not want the same things. They want a job in the government, whatever that job is, so that they, they can ride nice cars and get many girl, 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 girlfriends. Maybe they need a job to do that. I don't need a job to do that. God has blessed me. And so they are content. Oh, my man, you know, Costa, you can't rock this boat for us. You know, we're being opposition now. We are catching hell. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta stay in line. You got to be submissive. You got to be humble. When they say, Costa, be humble, what they really mean is, Costa, don't ask questions. Costa, accept it. Costa, do whatever they say. Costa, we got to win. Costa, we got to get rid of Dolia. Costa, we got to get that job so that we can build our house, so that we can drive a nice car, so I can get that girl I want, so that I can pay off a mortgage in America. That's what they want. But what Costa wants, Costa wants a Liberia that works for the people. Costa wants emancipation for the Liberian people. Costa wants economic empowerment for the people. Costa wants to see which hunt ended in my country. That is what I want. Yeah, they just want you be that uh, uh, um, that from Lano, that from Sodio, that will just be sending a message across, but your own message shouldn't be sent across. That's it. Costa. Costa, just do it. Costa, just forget it. Costa, just bury, bury your feelings. Costa, that A, that A is for it is not supposed to be like that. Just because it's always been that way does not mean it should always be that way. <laughs> you think God brought me here for nothing? He did not. It is not possible that God brought me here for nothing. I will not be a regular Costa. I am Costa 2.0. I am here for the people. Costa 2.0. Costa 2.0. I want nothing for myself but the Liberian people. Nothing. I refuse to accept the way the system is. I cry many a day, Baka. My heart bleeds for my country. So many poor, miserable people. People are so poor that they would give their children up to be adopted or to be shipped abroad and given to some white person because they hope that someday, someday, their child will remember them when they grow up and they'll come to help them. They see children as an investment. Because of poverty. How many are we? Five million people in the country so tremendously endowed with every natural resource you can think about. But look at us. Miserable lives. The fourth poorest country on the face of the earth. We must change this country. For once, politics has to be about the people. And that is what I am committed to. That is what I am committed to. And if you cannot accept this cost of 2.0, that is your business. If you cannot sign our social contract when we present it, that is your business. And if you claim that you care about the people, that you want to bring real change, that you want to be different from this CDC, you will sign our social contract. If you claim that you are a politician who sees it diff differently, who wants a real change in the country, you shouldn't have a problem that it comes from a 37-year-old boy. You shouldn't have a problem that a librarian put wants you to commit to something. Who? And they're asking themselves, uh, who the hell does he think here? Yeah, I'm Henry Pastor Lacosta, made by God endowed with certain skills, certain blessings, with a powerful voice. That is who the hell I am. <laughs> I know they're, they're saying that, boy, guy. Who the hell is Costa? Who the hell is Costa? Speaking like speaking and ask more, boy. I forget what just said. Someone yeah, oh, they they forget that man. That man was just talk like that. Who the hell is Costa? I am Henry Pedro Costa, born August 6, 1982, in a miserable country to a terribly poor, poor family. The first in my mother's, on, on, on my mother's side of the family to enter college. The first. The first to truly be emancipated from poverty. No one from my mother's side of the family had ever experienced the kind of life I have. And I'm far from rich. Far, far, far. But to break free from power from poverty. You, do you want to know who the hell I am? I am Henry Costa who was discovered eight years ago by DJ Blue. Gave me a platform and that platform I used and God himself having endowed me, brought me where I am. Do you want to know who the hell I am? I am the Costa who even though I could not put myself through college many all those years ago but I spent many many long many many long days reading self educating preparing myself not knowing that one day one day that God was preparing me for this fact that he was going to get me this voice that he was going to put me in. do you want to know who the hell I am I am my mother's son I inherited her compassion her love of a fellow man 
a strong sense of justice and fairness. That's who the hell Henry Costa is. That's who I am. And all these wonderful people who believe in me, I say, place your trust not in man. We will demand together. And if they put, want to put us to a test, put us to a test. And I've said it. I know my big brother Monil Kishen posted yesterday on Facebook, Costa, so if the opposition, if they refuse to sign your paper, your social con contract, what would you do? Would you campaign against them? I will not campaign against the opposition. If they refuse to sign my social contract, I will not campaign against them. But I will not campaign for them. It is as simple as that. The will of the Lord will be done. The will of the Lord will be done. How the hell are you tell me who the hell? Because I'm poor? Because I don't have fancy credentials? Because I come from a little village? So you refuse to accept and recognize that I am the most powerful voice in the, in the, in the country? It is arrogance for me to acknowledge what God has made me, right, Walker? Yeah. It is arrogance. It is friskiness for me to acknowledge who I am. But it is not friskiness. It is not arrow, arrow, arrogance when the older people decide that they want to be something. I want to be president. I want to be this. I, it is not arrogance when they say I. But it is arrogance when a 37 year old says I. Look at the hypocrisy, boy. Okay? Hmm. Look at the hypocrisy. So is it, is it a problem in our country like. Uh... A young man should not have aspirations and should not be independent in his thinking. He should be submissive. And a full soldier. Mm -hmm. Costa 2.0 is none of those things. I am tired, Bokai. I am tired. You know what we've gone through, Bokai. You've been with me for many years now. The sacrifices we've had to go through all these years. I want to see my country truly redeemed. I want to re see a real progressive lead lead leadership in my country. Not just some job blow to become president and the next thing you know they bring their friends, they bring their girlfriends and, they, and, they, and, and then tomorrow they say, oh, why are you talking about us when the last government was, was there? Why should you compare, why should any government compare itself with the previous government, why, guy? Mm -hmm. why should they tell you, oh, yeah, and when CDC was there, they did it, and when Ellie was there, they did it, why can't it be something new? That is what I want to see, folks. And if you believe in what I'm doing, if you believe it to be right, then they, and they tell me, Bokai, because I don't say I. Don't ever use the word I. How can you tell me that? And then they, 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 they try to control you all kinds of ways. They want to manipulate your diction. You can't use this word. You can't say I. You can't say this. You can't say that. Because you know what? You are too young for all the power that you, that you have. So you should not acknowledge it. Bokai, that's what they tell you. Mm -hmm. Bokai, be, be humble. What the hell you mean by be hum, 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 humble? To ask for what I want, to demand a better Liberia. You, know what? you say be humble? Mm -hmm. You can't say ah. Oh no, because I don't, don't say ah. You are sounding arro arro arrogant. You can't, you can't say this. You can't say that. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? You want Costa to support you, but you don't want to recognize Costa's feelings, Costa's concerns. This Costa 2.0 is the version you have to live to. You have to live with. We demand radical change in our country. Nothing less, nothing short of that. For once, politics must be about the people. Okay? That is my objective. I don't have to be anything in 2023. Absolutely nothing. I just want to ensure that every whoever comes to power, that it is big, it is about the, about the people. It is about the people. That is what I want. Nothing short of that. We're tired, man. Wait, 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 we're tired. The librarian people are tired. Poor guy. Mm -hmm. Did they imagine that they would be treated this way by George Weah? Poor guy? No. Look, their expectation was very high. Very high. This, the thought George Weah was one of them. That God has sent him to redeem them. He was the redeemer. He was the Messiah. Look at him. Look at what he's turned into. He's turned into an, an aristocratic elite. Building mansions while people are suffering. 
moving $12 million on the Ministry of Health budget and, 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 and putting $10 million in the Ministry of Public West so that he can award his road contracts and get his kickbacks. Why the hospitals will go without medical supplies because he doesn't go to those hospitals. It is the poor people that go to those hospitals. So let me tell you something. If you're looking for a submissive, submissive, unquestionably lawyer Henry Costa, you are mistaken. This is the version that you have to live with. And when you ask me who the hell I am, I am Henry Pedro Costa, endowed with certain gifts by my maker, set forth on this path by my God himself, who has protected me, guided me, brought me thus far, and is not even finished with me yet. He is still more than me. That is who I am. I am the Costa who wants so much, so much different, so much better for my country. That is what I want. Thank you. You either accept that or you don't accept it. But that is what I want. And let me tell you something. I have made, I have made a conscious decision to rise above partisan politics. For me, it's all about the people and nothing, nothing less. I will not be the voice of a political party anymore, ever. I will go back to my roots as the voice of the voiceless, truly. I want to say that very clearly. I am here for the people, just the people. Not some politician's objective, just for the people. That is why I am here. I'm tired. Our country has to be different. It has to be different. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Now, Bokai, let's move on to other things here. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, the president submitted the budget. Yeah. The recast draft budget to the legislature. The House of Representatives received the first as required by the Constitution. The budget process begins with the House. By Monday, the House of Representatives was done with the budget. They voted upon it and sent it to the, to the Senate for concurrence. In that budget, they never cut their salaries. They made no cuts. Of the $42 million budget of the, House, of, of the National Legislature, they only cut the amount of $3,224 from their $42 million budget. The budget of the pro tem, which is $1.5 million, was not touched. It remains as is. The budget of the speaker, 1,017,000, remains as is. Yes. Hmm. The president's budget of $3.5 million, they shaved off $580,000. But mind you, the president gets money from the NSA. The NSA has $9.4 million. The NSA budget was almost not even touched. The president gets a lot of money from the NSA. A lot of money. Operational funds for security operations to take it to the president. The Ministry of Health, which, which has a budget of about 54 million, they cut it. Security services, they took out $12 million. They went to the county, to the hospitals. They cut the budget for Jackson F. Doe by over $150,000. The hospital in Nimba. They went to JFK. They cut over $128,000 on JF, JF, JFK. Hmm. They went to the Liberia Electricity Corporation. LEC. They took out $1.2 million from LEC. 
They went to water and sewer. Water and sewer had two point one million dollars in the original budget. They cut one million dollars from water and, from from water and sewer. They went to the Ministry of Education, which is under-resourced. They cut three million dollars from the Ministry of Education's budget. But they cannot cut their own budgets. Okay. My disappointment, Costa, is uh, cutting something from the Ministry of Health because we are facing this the killer disease, the virus in, in the war. Why are we touching the Ministry of Health? We said we don't have a, a, a quality health services in our country. Then we are cutting something from there again to pull it to Ministry uh, of Public Works. Yeah, because build, building roads to Jovia is more important than saving lives, Parker. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> because every time we have built a mile of road, we have makes money. He gets kickbacks. Every time a contract is awarded to build one mile of road, we have makes money. And we are needs to make money for we are to be able to build his homes, to be able to support his lifestyle, to be able to fatten his bank account. So we are needs to do that. On the issue of Charles Shalif, yesterday it was reported by the Liberian National Police. On the issue of his money. I mean, the actual money is 886,000 U.S. dollar Look at that. Yeah. The actual amount, the Liberian National Police confirmed it. The actual amount that was supposedly, allegedly withdrawn from Charles Salih's account is 886,000 U.S. dollars and 10 million Liberian dollars. Are you listening to that, Walker? Yeah. And I can understand why a lot of people don't feel sympathetic for Charles Salif. I don't feel sympathetic for him. I don't give a hell about Charles Salif. How the hell? This is the same thing I'm talk, talking about. What money did Charles Salif have? Before his mother became president, this man had nothing, boy. Okay? Yeah. The moment his mother became president, now he, he, he can boast of a fat bank account. This is the way the country has always been. It's about the people who come to power and their children and their friends. And this is what I don't want to be a part of. Mm. Where the hell did Charles Salif get all that damn money from? Where the hell did he get all that damn money from? 886,000 US dollars. So now they have, they have arrested several people from the bank. Why? Okay. Mm. They brought several people in that were interviewing him. Ragnar Sia has been on this story. At least five people from the bank have been brought forward. Five people, including the operational manager of, G, of, of GT Bank. Yeah. They have been brought forward. Questioned by LMP. But the thing is, Walker, how did Charles Salif have that kind of account? $886,000 with room for one bank account. Jesus Christ. Hmm. I'm telling you, I can't understand. Let me tell you something. You see one of the things I tell you all the time about injustice in our country? My friend and brother Rodney C. You're not like Rodney. Rodney ain't give a damn. <laughs> people don't know Rodney. Rodney. Rodney is one of the most defiant people I know. Defiant in the right way. Rodney will never back him. Will never submit when he is right. Stubborn spirit. That's how you should be as a man. Rodney can't talk much of, but he got stubborn spirit. When he knows he's right, he will stand on his right. Let me tell you what's happening. A few days ago, Rodney Sia was in the traffic. Mm -hmm. I can give you the specific point where he was. He was driving, going somewhere. Listen to the story. <laughs> Rodney Sia and Rodney Lesso drive himself. Rodney is in his car driving, going. And then he's in the traffic. He's in the right position. Then he hears that this. This the siren. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, the Vita area, Vita area somewhere. Mm -hmm. Rodney is in the in, in traffic. He's in the right lane. And then he hears this siren coming. Well, come convoy. And guess who it was? Associate Justice Joseph Nagwe. Under the law, Boaka. And the associate justice does not have the right to a convoy. Sure. Only the president 
the vice president, and who else? Somebody help me with our law. I need our law. The speaker. The speaker, I believe, and the chief justice, I think. Justice, yeah. Yeah, I think just, yeah, just about four persons. Just about four yeah. persons in the entire country. An associate justice does not have the right to a convoy and a siren and people got to clear the way for him. So when Rodney recognized the license plate that it was not the vice president, it was not the speaker, it was not the chief justice, but it was just a Supreme Court justice. So Rodney said, I am not leaving. I am not removing my car. I will stay right here. <laughs> and guess what they did? Look, this country has to change. You see what I'm telling you about this damn country? The country has, has to change. They need real progressive leader, leadership. Somebody who would not uh, tolerate this nonsense. So Rodney refused to leave. To get out of the way. But why the hell should Rodney get out of, out of the way? Rodney was in, was, was in his right. He had no business removing himself from the right from the road to make way for the man. Rodney had no business. And Rodney said, I will not leave. So guess what happened? Mm. Joseph Nagbe's car comes and, and, and I think it hits Rodney's car. Because Rodney said, I am not going. So Rodney was the immobile one. He, he, he was packed. And so they hit Rodney. And now he's angry. Who the hell is Rodney's shit? That he did not remove his vehicle to make way for me. Look at me, associate justice. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? So now he's angry. Why did Rodney Sear re re refuse to clear the way for him? And so he has decided to use his power to intimidate Rodney Sear. So they wrote this letter. Let me read it for you. From the Supreme Court. Can you imagine? He's using his powers unjustly. This is corruption. Abuse of office. This is corruption. They call it official corruption. This is abuse of power. So he wrote rather this letter yesterday. May 19, 2020. Yesterday, from the chief I mean from the associate justice. Let me read. Judicial branch, Republic of Liberia, Office of the Clerk, Supreme Court of Liberia, Temple of Justice, Monrovia, Liberia. Mr. Rodney C., Managing Editor. From base Africa, Monrovia, Liberia. Dear Mr. C, I have been directed by his honor, Joseph N. Nagbe, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of Liberia, to cite you for a conference with his honor on Thursday, May 21, 2020, at the hour of 11 a.m., relative to the traffic incident involving you and the justice, which occurred on Monday. May 18, 2020, at about 9 a.m. around the Vietnam area while he was following police instructions. Kind regards. Very truly yours. Attorney at law, Sam Mam Mamulu, clerk of the Supreme Court. Are you listening to this nonsense? He is citing Rodney C. to his office for a conference. Rodney, my friend, do you want me to stop respecting you? If you attend that conference, if you attend that, what is the day of the conference? Thursday. Rodney, I dare you. I dare you. If you attend that conference Thursday, you and I will have a serious problem. If you attend that conference. What kind of nonsense is that? What, what kind of nonsense is that? The chief justice and also call 102. And explain to them. And one or two were like complaining, say, this is why we've been going through. Um, people take advantage because they are top government officials. They take advantage of the traffic. They just jump from one place to another. Yes. That's what he's been facing. Yes. That's the problem. Rodney Sears should not go to that conference. Even the police knew that Rodney was yeah. in the right. Mm -hmm. The police acknowledged that the associate justice had no business. Trying to bulldoze the traffic. 
Can you imagine that? Look at look look at what we fought for. All the human beings we killed during the war. We say we want justice in the country. Is this what you get? The same thing I'm pissed off about the child Salif thing. It doesn't matter what guy. What how child Salif got the money. That's not the point. Yeah. You should not go into his bank account. That is my issue. Yeah, how he left his account. That's how he left his account. Rodney Sia will not attend that conference. Let's go to the lines and take and take some calls. What kind of nonsense is that? Who the hell do you think you are? Because you associate justice? Huh? They did it before. I remember years ago, I was discussing a certain case about one of the justices of the Supreme Court. I had evidence on something they had done. I exposed the evidence and made an, one of the justices had committed a certain erroneous act. And when I got the evidence, I published the evidence. It made them angry. They called their colleague and made him to reverse his, his action. So they were angry that I embarrassed them. E even though they made him reverse his decision that he took. You know what they did to me? Mm. The Supreme Court wrote me. I was a hard FM at the time. They said I should supply them all of the recordings of the shows in which I discussed them. Mm. I told them on the show. I read their letter. I said to them, do you not know the damn law? Do you not know that under our jurisprudence, the accused individual cannot provide evidence against himself? How the hell you will tell me I'm going to give you the, the, the recordings of the shows in which I discussed this matter? You want me to provide you evidence to be used against me? Do you not know elementary law? How the hell did you amount at the damn Supreme Court? When I finished dealing with them, boy, guess, guess what? Mm. They never follow up. I said, come arrest me. I dare them. I said, come arrest me. You did, one of you did something wrong. If you, if you think what he did wrong, if you think what he did was not wrong, why did you ask him to reverse his action? Brock, I, an associate just took upon him, him himself and did something only the full bench was allowed to do. I'm not going to go too deep into this particular issue. But his colleagues did not know that he had taken a decision that all of them were supposed to take together. So when I exposed it, then they got angry with him. They said, why did you do this? Then they made him reverse it. Then I got the letter. Mm. I got the, the, the memo in which he reversed the decision that he, that he took. And when I exposed it, they got angry with, with me. They said, I should supply them recordings of my show. So they can, then they cited me to conference. I told them, you don't know the damn law. Do you not know that on our jurisprudence, the accused person cannot give you evidence against himself? Mm. What kind of nonsense is this? What, what kind of nonsense is this? They seem not to the Rodney C. Rodney will not go anywhere. Except the Rodney C. I know. Let's go to the lines and take, and take some calls there, Baka. Okay, so folks, the phone lines are now activated on 0770-102-102-0770-102-102-0886-010383. Once again, 0886-010383. And the WhatsApp number is plus 231-888-624171. Plus 231-888-624171. Let's take our first caller on this line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Costa. Good morning to our fellow Liberians on the biggest platform. My name is Noah Sam Gibson. And I'm phoning in as usual on history number two, page zero, to the Palm Somalia Drive. Costa, thank you this morning. Indeed, you have our support again. We will not serve as prey sinker or we will not succumb to anybody that will come to power and continue to delve in the same wrong or take the sin that has kept this country down for years after years. We will not accept that. We will be as radical, it will be more radical than anyone thinks that ever. Ever to you say this more, it represents the view of us, those of us who support you, who believe in your vision, who believe in your platform, who believe in your calling. Who believe in your thinking for Liberia as a 
relents from moving like they let fall. Enough is enough. I'm telling you, we got to fix for what is right and get rid of what is wrong and ensure that this country, look, Martin Luther King said, somebody else, uh, 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 in a race, if the person is ahead of you, you are behind you, should be fast up, okay, you should run fast up to the person that is ahead of you. Now, countries are left up behind. Right now, we need to we need to come with a better act and be more progressive, actually more than we I mean more than we think we have been to ensure that at least we be respect that one more in Liberia. So definitely, everything you said this morning it meet our I mean it, 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 it meet it meet it meet our test. We support it. And in conclusion, I also talk to my 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 my, my boy. Let me add my voice so when you are a rocky fear goes over there. My daughter said rocky fear is a personal friend to me. I never respect him. He should never go there in the first place. Who has chosen that number? Eh? Who has chosen that number in the first place? Because he's a he's a he's a uncle or I don't know, Georgia is a nephew or what that's the religion. Why should an associate drop the name of one in the first place? Why are we heading? We will not accept it. If he okay. goes there, we should take away the respect for him. I tell you, I all right, thank you so much, Noah Zawo Gibson, for calling in. Now we'll see if we can take another person here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Jerry Ann. Morning, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Jerry? Go ahead, go ahead. Long clan, Jerry. Yeah. My name is Jerry Ann, and I'm calling in regards to the statement made by our election today in regards to the war in economic crime quote. Um, that has been something very near and dear to me because I'm a victim. I graduated high school at the age of 15. Because of the civil war, the, the rebels did a lot to us. They raped my people, burned down our places. And um, they helped me nine days. They had a doctor at one point. And our uh, email was because of that, we you know, we just today. I promised me I'm a woman. I graduated high school at age 15. That even in a university, they could not allow me to go to a university when I got the scholarship down below the age level before. Today, I was conscious of my, my future, but I'm thankful to God. I came on today to say to all of you listening, there were no, this whole situation in Liberia will not end unless the war and economic crime court is established. So, you please join the whole legend. And let us fight to eradicate this mass madness in Liberia. And I, Jerry and Christy Dennis, I'm coming back in the limelight. When I come out for humanitarian, I will act as a humanitarian. When I come out for advocate, even I'm a minister, I'm not a politician, but I'm an advocate like Mother Teresa, who has all the opposition and the government to do the right thing. If you want to be a first thing in Liberia, and you do not think that the world economic crisis is important, Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Now we'll see if we can take somebody from uh, this line. Good morning. Rodney Sia is not going. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go tell Joseph Nagbe. That me, Rodney, lawyer. I advise my client not to go. Yeah, welcome. You're the one you calling for. What kind of nonsense is that? I'm calling from Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, Bismarck. Okay, welcome. Paul, go morning, my brother. Paul Bismarck. Morning. Yeah, what's up, Krista? How you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing good, buddy. I'm a long time listener to the show. It's like one of my first time calling on your show, my man. Yeah, but you've appeared on the show at all, Paul. <laughs> Welcome, my brother. Yeah, I've been on the show many times, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I was listening this morning. I felt prepared to call, right? Because I saw like doing people. They talk about the law all the time, bro. But they don't even understand the law. Yeah, they only prosecute people or they try to go after people when they have like, some political disagreement with them. I saw I was like solicitor general or the chief prosecutor for Liberia, right? Mm -hmm. And soon my man MPK, right, manufacturing domain kid. He had a security guard behind one of the guys. I was old brother from Broadway, Dickie Brown, was the one that was standing behind him. But mm -hmm. few years, I mean a year ago, Dickie Brown was training people on the beach. But it was the opposition person that was training people on the beach, like my nation on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. the when after the incident, they tried to overthrow the gun, all that was. True. So when it came to the factory, they were all over the bed because he made a comment on Facebook. You know, you know and, and I think sometimes I just watch, I don't, you know, I don't talk much uh, online, I don't like to put myself out there. 
But I tried to follow the law, and most of the law in Liberia is the Quran. It's a kind of an imitate American law. You talk about the Marana's right, right? Reading somebody the Marana's right, but then you still asking them to make statements after reading their right, they say they don't want to talk, but they like making jokes. You say because they're not talking, they feel guilty. And the premise of that is actually what Marana can come from an intuition in um, Arizona. It was a case between Marana and the state of Arizona where they, they questioned the guy in the absence of his lawyer and he was remaining silent and they got information from him. So I look at these big lawyers, some of them went to fancy schools in, all over the world. Okay. So they don't all of them there. The two of them keep just, I mean, they're just the guy you were talking about, Jeff. Uh, so I just got compared to Paul because I'm a distant um, observer of Liberian policies and also Liberian uh, 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 justice system. Okay. I don't think those guys were lost to and understand anything over there. Thank you. Thanks so much for calling in from the United States. Let's see if we can take somebody again from the international line. Uh, good morning. Where are you calling us from? Uh, good morning. My name is Martino Flowing. I'm calling from Minnesota. How are you, sir? I'm okay. Go ahead. I don't want to remark Koska that it is time for him to come out as a man to form his own political party where they have to support him. <laughs> no, bro. We're not form a party. Yeah. <laughs> The country has too many parties already. Yeah. We, we will not form a party, my dear brother. You, you cannot live from beyond. No politician will agree for you to tell them what to do. Trust me, nobody will sign up to run for Dr. Nkoska. Nobody will sign up to Then they will not get my support. Simple. Okay. Okay, in this situation, if two parties chose, let's say that the CDC and the other position will you support CDC? No, I, I will not support CDC. I can't support John Weir. They say never belongs to God, but I can never support John Weir. All right, now we'll take another person. Not possible. Line. Good morning, you are you calling us from? Yeah, good morning, this is Joria Stepson. Joria Stepson. We will not form party. We will stay in the parties that we are, but we will make change from there. Good morning, my brother.
or going beyond 2020 in the 2018 census has not been done. And for the third time, there is nothing in the budget for census. They don't want to do the census, Dr. Doc, 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 Doc Gay. They are not interested. So it means that we are government and all of the lawmakers, whether opposition or seditions, do not know the Liberian people. And we got what we have because our people keep selling their birthright. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Dad, for calling. Let me take some locals, uh, local callers here now. Uh, we have to take, uh, let's see. Uh, my boy, you know, is on the line with us this morning. Uh, wow, wow, wow. I'm in the middle of the Ministry of Health budget. Welcome, money, pastor. Money, uh, my boy, you know. Yeah. My say, I'm too disappointed when I listen to you this morning. Because at the CPP, we all want this date, this job, we government by 2020 to be out. In fact, they should start considering ourselves being former president of former government. But what our colleagues are doing, the CPT towards, uh, 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 actually, it, it, it's not going down well with me. It's not going down well with me. We, the COP, we can have a force. All of, some of us, some of our friends, they are all members of the CPT. Then why would certain person be among this group and say they don't want to stay down with Costa, they don't want to do anything? We will not run a political party. We are not a political party, we are just a pressure group. So you, if you think to yourself, maybe we are kind of... Uh, we are gonna problem to you. you. I mean, you don't want to see us. Well, they cost out the next thing and watch the show. But we will not form another political party. No, we will not form party. We all want this country to be straight and things to go on the way it's supposed to be. When anybody come and say, oh, we, we don't know CPP, uh, COP, they don't say that and watch the show, but we will not form any political party. If they don't want to work with us, fine. We can be there and watch the show and just that. Right. Thank you. But we're not being a better person. I say, oh, if I say that something, something, who the hell you are? Who the hell you are to tell somebody that you don't want to see Costa? Who the hell you are? You're uh, nothing. Okay, you know, you. Costa, you, you have nobody will battle that. You tell CPT when we fall out of hell. The thief and the CDC will just boot or sweep them. Okay. So, so they better think about it. Nobody is important than COP. Thank you so much, my boy, you know, for calling in. Let me take uh, one international caller again. Uh, they are coming in. Their numbers. Let's take this person. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Boaka. I'm so sorry, you know, I disturb you a lot. And good morning to our hero. Good morning to our Nelson Mandela. Good morning to our Mahama Gandhi. And good morning to Costa 2.0. Good morning, leader. Good morning, my friend. Welcome, my brother. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Boka, just a uh, few minutes, I just have some few points to discuss. Yeah. You know, uh, firstly, I want to congratulate the CPP for the signing of the framework. But we also pray that before the end of 2023, we don't want any problem between the CPP leaders. We ask them for unity so that we can remove George Mayer from a power comes to the CPP. That's number one. Number two, the recast budget. You see, People, you should be aware that these lawmakers, they are all, they are all unsophisticated. They are not educated. I don't think they read those documents that were given to them. They just sign this document by reading this document. And there are many people need to understand that these lawmakers, they are not in their interest. Because if they are in the interest of the great people, they have for the two million budget, they could have removed more than three or four parts million for the great people. But they have to remove only three thousand out of the two million of the budget. And also another thing quickly or Costa, the issue of the food distribution. Okay? Mm -hmm. I understand that most of our Latin people they don't have the they don't have the facility or the access to watch international news. But some of us watch international news. Costa is not going to be there for the Latin people every day. They have to stand up for themselves. If you pour on the international news now, if you look at what is happening in Chile and Brazil, those people, they are on the street, they are protesting. The government don't have food to get them, they are protesting, they are throwing stones at the police. We are not asking the people to throw stones at our police, but they also have to wake up. Costa is not going to be there for them every day. They have to wake up and they have to make their point to the government. And last thing, please, brother, lastly, Costa, I'm appealing to 
show you. You see, the COP is a is an organization. It is not for the CPP. It is not for George Weir. Okay. If the CPP does, if the CPP does wrong tomorrow, also we are going to protest against them. Okay. I have a lot of friends in India. In India, I encourage them also to watch the post show. So we have a lot of people in Asia, with our CPP Asia or chapter as well. We want to. We want to be there for the cost of the people. So, Costa, please, I want you to look in our situation. We need COP, HR chapter. We All right, my brother. We will do that. Even though they don't know Liberia, they don't know Africa, but they have interest in the Costa show because I encourage them to watch the Costa show. Okay. Thank you for your time. 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 Thank you for your since they've been calling my number on that issue about yeah, but let me say something to them. Uh -huh. uh, last night we had a very su successful meeting. Stevie Johnson, myself, Aaron Nella, and the gentleman uh, who is actually de developing our website. Oh man, you will love the COP website. Um, <clears throat> we have a timeline. Uh, we are going to be launching the website in two weeks. It's a very, very user friendly, nice website pictures, videos, there's a donation page, you can go and donate money there, and and and, and then uh, every every donation that is made, we can track it, uh, you know, how much, how much, and from the back end, we can, we can tell or who sent what, you can decide to be anonymous too, you can be an anonymous donor, that means we'll never see your name, and I mean, it's a beautiful website, very, very beautiful website, so uh, we will be posting, I mean, putting the site up, you can go and register. This is a beauty bugger. You can log onto the site, register as a COP member, and you can get your membership ID generated right on the site. You can put your photo, bugger. Your photo, you can put it on the on your ID. We made the ID card right there. Every ID card will, will have a unique generator code. Each ID card will have a code. That means you have a certain number assigned to it. And you can print your ID card out with your photo, everything on it. The COP logo, the librarian flag, and your photo. You can print your ID card out from right on the website. You can print your ID card out. That is how very nice is, is, is the site is going to be, my man. My man, you know, it's, 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 it's an amazing website. The people will love it. You can register as a COP member. Your, your information will be in the database. Every time COP does something, every time we issue a press release, when we put it up there, you will get an alert. An email will automatically come to you to say the COP has posted something. If you donate $1 to the COP or $2 to the COP, you will get, the moment your donation goes, you will receive an email t telling you thank you for your donation to the COP. It is amazing, brother. Wow. You can decide to be an, uh, an anonymous donor and you can, sub you can decide to subscribe. You, you, you can say you want to be a one-time donor or you want to be a regular donor. You, you can decide to donate $10 every month. You just click the option every month automatically. The software will debit your account. And the beauty is that we are not the ones taking the money out of your account. We're using a third-party platform, which is secure. Just like PayPal and other things. We're using a third-party plat platform. That is the platform that we use for the donations to go to. I mean, to go through. So it is not coming. We, 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 we don't have the capacity to have access to your credit card information, your debit card info information. We don't even see the information because it's a third party plat platform, very secure. And so we built the website, the website will be put up. People from all over the world can go on, they can register their membership. You can print your ID card out with your membership number as a COP. So maybe may, maybe Boga Camara's ID card will say uh, 012335. And then Costa ID card can be 012336. And then uh, B Sister Francis Power ID card could say 012337. Uh, and that is what we have we, we have built. And so, and then here is a beauty. Uh, the people will put in charge of the funds. And then by the way, the COP, let me announce to you, the COP is a full-fledged registered organization in the United States. We have registered the COP, it, it has been registered. It is called this, the Council of Patriots Foundation in the state of Delaware. If you go on the, the Department of State of Delaware website right now and you search to find out where the COP is existing, search, you just put a COP name in there, you will see all the particulars will appear. 
the COP has been incorporated as a legally registered entity in these United States of America. It is amazing. Our website, my brother Samuel Sagaman can sit there in Australia and he can log on to the website, he can register, he can put his picture in there, he can print his ID card. If for any reason he, he misplaces his, his ID card tomorrow, he can simply log back in, it will save his photo and his information. He will not need to read to put anything back in. He can simply go there and just click print. So you can put a hard paper like a poster sheet in your printer. You just click print. It will print the thing out with your photo on your ID card with your unique number. Okay? And you can just take a scissors, a pair of scissors, and just cut it. And you got your ID card out. Wow. My man, you got your ID card. That is what we're doing. We're not playing, playing fun. We're waiting for Corona to go. The COP is, is, is going to be amazing. This is, yeah, so we are a legally registered organization in the United States. We are going to open our bank bank account. We are putting only female in charge. Only women. Bagai. Only women will put in charge of the bank account. I would not be signatory to the account. Stephen Johnson will not be signatory to the account. No man will be signatory to the account. We're putting women in there. Sister mm -hmm. Lopu. Uh, uh, a couple of other women, they will decide. Three, four women, they, they will be the one signatory to the account. So we are illegally registered. And when we launch a website in, in two weeks, man, you will love the website. Uh, yeah, you will love the website. Like, how many websites you know you can go on and print ID card? Boy, I love having. Oh. You know, see why is that why you log on, you put your info information, you click print and print an ID card. Eh? You know, see why that one when we public when, when we publish a press release. The press release automatically goes to you and say. And uh, the COP just posted it. For example, if we got 56,000 members who have registered on the website, every time we issue a press release, every single one of them will get the press release directly. Wherever in the world you are, you will be able to get it. This is you know, innovation. We're not playing fun. So to all of our brothers, our, our brother from India who called, you will be able to form your chapter there. You will be able to supply us information from, from, from there. And everyone will be able to use this website. It will be like our central gathering point. So we had a fantastic conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, my, my sister come for one women. Women are more trusted. Uh, women uh, have a for women to steal, except for Ellen. Ellen a B rule. But let's go back to the phone lines. I beg you, let this of course, because <laughs> let, of are really... let's, take, let's take some calls. Let's see your opinion, Let's take our sister from Atlanta. Amen. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome. Is that, is that is that my sister, Ima? Yeah. Uh. Uh, my name is Emma Sherry, going from Atlanta, COP chapter. Let's, let's hear you, my dear sister. A few input this morning concerning COP. Uh, the COP is a movement that I and my sister believe in, and we're going to work everything possible to make sure we strengthen our forces out here in the diaspora. Uh, Costa, let's focus on us. I mean, I believe your idea yesterday on the show about the, the um, social contract is welcoming because our, our plan and vision for the COP is to make sure this time around that we will not have a leader that will trample upon the, the common people of Liberia. We are tired, especially people, uh, we that were born in the, 70, the late 70s, the 80s, Going all the way down to the 90s, we believe our future was stolen. We believe that our future was delayed. We believe there were a lot of things we went through that we should have gone through. And we're not going to take any chances anymore because 20, early 12 years, but we are six years is enough. On top of that, we charged another seven years. I mean, we need a better Liberia. We need a better country. And we're going to do everything possible. I support your idea, and everybody that I know that is member of the COP Atlanta who supports. The idea of the social contract. And thank, thank you, so my much sister. For this morning. Thank you very, very much, my sister. I mean, that website thing made me feel. I was, Siri Johnson, I were very happy last night, and so I want to report that to you. Your COP website will be the best website you can find. The best. It has been developed by very competent people. Very, very, and they're building it absolutely free of charge, Walker. That kind of website I described to you so free of charge, because. They believe in their country, and that is their contribution to their country by building this super, super amazing website for the COP. Yo, let's take some more calls. Let's take 
this person on the international line quickly. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Baga. Yeah, your name where you calling from? Uh, let me say good morning to our hero, Hero Festival Costa. Good morning, my brother. Dubai, welcome. I mean, even you in Dubai will be all the rest up, bro. Mm. <laughs> well, that time we go to we we anyway. Well, that time we go we anyway. Exactly. I can assure you, I can assure you, we will try our possible best. Oh, uh, quickly to the issue, Harry Potter. You see, th these are things that we are been seeing about this government. This government does not respect the rules of law. They does not respect the rules of law. The government are there in error. For the day this government took power, George Weah have been breaking the rules of the Republic of Liberia. So we have said it with all terms, with all numbers, and thank God we have our own that have come to redeem us. And that is the man here in Pedro Costa. He is our Nelson Mandela, he is our Julius Malema of South Africa today. And we will make sure we support this young man. Because we do believe that these young men have the ideology that we all have today to move our country forward. To see how best our people can live a decent life. Our people are tired. Our people cannot be living in this kind of life that, that is unbearing for, for them. No. Can you imagine today because of the we did, some of us were forced to live for us that. Because you. of the Because of the way the government is proceeding. The government is proceeding from the east. So that let let man say, oh, we cannot stay in your country where you can even find or deal with you. No, no, of course we cannot. What is the reason why we going to school? It it it, it 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 to help our people. But you go to school, you drive from college, can you imagine nothing to do, no job. So some of us were forced, I mean, to leave for Elsa. But it was not our intention to leave to leave for Elsa. No, of course. But think what? Okay. We have somebody that we can grab, that we can grab our shoulder with. We get somebody that will give us. All right, bro. First thing, we know we trust that person. Thank you so Thank much. You so much Thank you so much. Thank you, bro. Braga, let me hold you there quickly. Uh, we want to do this for our brother, Michael Taylor. Michael from uh, GSL Rural Community. Michael, you celebrate your birthday today. I hope I have it correct. My, Michael is a brilliant young man. He's one of our passionate supporters. Michael Taylor, we celebrate you today. Of course, our dear sister from COP Europe, Dinah, Chelsea, uh, Tebley. She celebrates today, and shout out to all of you who celebrate today. Let's take that call, Abwagai. Hello? Abwagai? Did we lose you, Abwagai? Good morning, sir. Good morning, Abwagai. Yeah, mm -hmm. your name where you calling from? Good morning. Your name where you calling from? Yeah, good morning, Abwagai. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Yeah, I said no. I I wanted to, I would I would like to call you. I, I get information. Somebody I was getting information. I would like to call you. What is your name? What I, is I your name? name? Yeah. Okay. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. Listen, you don't have to call your name. Contact me. Hello. 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 Yeah. Okay. Listen to Costa now. You can just call and talk to that. Uh, but then call call then contact me off the air now. You you say you don't want to call your name. We understand you want to provide information. Contact us off the air, okay? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. On Facebook or something. Thank you. Facebook. Let's take more right. calls. Yeah. Uh, let's take this person quickly on this line. Good morning. Good morning, Aaron P. Costa. Good morning, Boca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the one you calling from? Supreme Do from Minnesota. Let's hear you, my brother, something. Yeah, uh, my concern has to do with a senior man, Harold P. Costa. Uh, you know, I always say that we, 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 we are the member of COB. We are fighting beyond the same kind of people that are attacking Eric Costa for something that is in the interest of the Liberian people, especially about the social contract. Some are going on social media asking that hearing is demanding CPP, which of course he is not demanding some even saying that hearing is talking as uh individual, not talking in the capacity of COP. He's one who come and say no. Hearing 
Cancer is an individual when it comes to his party. But if he talking, he talking as an CPP head. COP, you mean? COP. COP. Hello? The social contact you talk about. Mm. Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Are you getting me? No sound person would really hate what all he talking about. Because what all he's saying is in the interest of the Liberian people. So, I would like to tell my people that anybody that in the interest of the Liberian people, mm. instead of you, uh, Chris Harry Costa, come to him, let all four hands around him to see how best we can demand this CPP to for them to take that into consideration. He signed our, our contract. Bye. Yeah. Did you hear the story about when Charles Julu overthrew? You remember you heard, you heard that story when Charles Julu, the late general Charles Julu? Yeah. When he overthrew the government and then he, he entered the mansion, he said, Why is it they must do the more they play tape? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just sign our, our contract. Our contract, that's all. And we'll put signature page on it for our people to sign. We won't pull it. Maybe about 5,000 people must sign it. They will give it to the Political leader sign a contract. We want war, economic crime code that, that, that one. We want special fast track corruption code that two. We want, uh, you must say your relative will not wear in the government. No family member will wear in your government. That's three. Uh, no witch hunt. No uh, going after after people that you don't like because you, they didn't support you on one reason or the other. Plenty of things will put it there. Library taking full charge of the economy. Yes, one want you to promote an affirmative economic policy to empower Liberians. And the first thing we want you to do by, by, by that will make it specifically clear. Eh? Take the rest market. Take the 230 million dollar rest market, take it and give it to Liberian citizens. Provide finance access to capital to the commercial, the very commercial bank. That's thing you can do. That kind of power you want to keep Liberian poor because you're a friend. You want a Liberian man to get rich because a Liberian man will get frisky and all that nonsense. This is their country. They must get rich in their own country. Nigerians are billion, billionaires. Ghanaians have many hundreds and hundreds of millions, millions of dollars in their own country. In our country, our people are poor. You must do those things. You know, you, you don't commit to it. We will not, we will not, we will not, we will not, we will not support you. We will, we, we will just stand back. You think we don't come in? You think I would do without even cry or sheen? No cry or sheen here. Let's take some calls, calls, calls here. You don't sign a social contract, then you will not get our support. A feeling. Nobody feeling, feeling me. Joseph, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Baka. Good morning. Let me say good morning to our hero. Good morning. Good morning, morning, my brother. Thank you so much. Baga, Baga, hold on there. Don't, don't take a call. Hold on. When Liberian politicians are running for office, do you know where they go beg for money? No. They go to Ghana. They go to Ni Nigeria. They go beg for money to run for office in Liberia. Baga, I know this because I've been around politicians running for office. They go to beg for money abroad because we have had a system that ensure that Liberians do not get rich in their own country, Boakai. It boils my blood. And do you know the reason why we, we, we do not, we have that system in the, in the country? Because we are intimidated. We feel insecure. If I, if I create an environment where a Boakai Kamara becomes a multi-millionaire, Boakai would want to take power. Boakai would be a threat to me. So I must ensure 
that a Buaka Kamara does not be a millionaire, does not become a millionaire. Mm. That is what we do. Liberians don't have money in their own country. You see people running for, for president every weekend. They met in Ghana, they met in Nigeria. You know why he's going to do that? He's going to hustle for money. He's going to beg Nigerians. I know this. This is what our politicians do. They go to Nigeria, they go to Ghana, they go to other countries to beg for money. Who do they go to beg? They go to beg Nigerians and Ghanaians. 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. I speak from experience and with authority on the matter. But we must build a, 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 an economic system where Liberians can become multi-millionaires in their country through business, through enterprise. For example, this is one of our ideas. We eat $230 million worth of rice each year. $230 million worth of rice. There are five or six imp importers of rice. Only one of those importers, one of those companies, what's, what's the name? Uh, uh, Futa. Only Futa Corporation has Liberian owners ownership. The other four or five Im importers are all foreign owned. We eat all that rice. All that rice. All that money goes where? The profit. They, they, they make about what? 70, 70 million dollars in profit a year. Baka. So 70 million US dollars leaves our country every year to go to Lebanon or India where the, those, those, those people are from. That's where the profit goes. Buaka Kamara, listen to me. Mm. One of the easiest things to do is to import a commodity to sell. All you need is the warehouse and the, and the access to capital. We will put in our contract. The government, before we support you, you must commit to an affirmative economic policy to economically empower Liberians. A practical step would be to take the rice market from the foreigners and give it to Liberians. We, you must say, will take the $230 million rice market with a 70% success to 70% profit margin, annual profit margin, give it to a consortium of Liberians. You bring, you form several Liberian com companies encompassing all the, the 16 tribes in the country. Put them together. Form their companies. You, the government, should guarantee bank loans. The banks provide the money. Take the warehouses from the Lebanese and the people who got it now and give it to the Liberians. So that in a year or two or three, Liberia will become millionaire. The, the hard thing, you bring a right seller, you make profit. What can what hard in bringing right to sell? Nothing. Why are we talking about growing rights in the, in the country, but in the interim, we want a President Yuri or a President Bokan or a President Comis or a President Kanga Lawrence to take the rice market and give it to Liberia and say, hey, go to the bank, go to GT Bank. The government has guaranteed 50 million or 70 million. They go abroad to bring the rice. They put it in the warehouse. They supply it across the country. That is one of the things I want to see happen in my own country. Now the government is about to come buy millions of dollars worth of rice. Who are they buying that rice from? For the distribution from the foreigners. Everybody? All the profits of the rice the government is about to buy, those profits will go to Lebanon. I don't have anything against the Lebanese people. I have decent Lebanese friends. But it's hard time we take charge of our economy. Yeah. You think I come and sit down here, somebody can be president again, then prove when you look, then social foreigner be getting rich. That nonsense will not happen. We must make our people rich in our own in our own in our own country. So if I'm running for president, I want to go to Baga Kamara and say, Baga, my man, can't give me 200000 for my campaign. Baga could give it because Baga is a multi-millionaire. I don't have to go to Ghana to beg for money for campaign. I don't have to go to Nigeria. It is a wickedness. That's what they do, Baga. Mm -hmm. Government after government, they suppress their own people. Their own people are poor. They prefer the foreigners getting rich. So you will sign a damn contract that says that you will empower Liberians, will take the damn rights market from the, from the foreigners and give it to Liberians. And in a year, we will have Liberian millionaires who will take two crime men, two, two girl men, two full men, two Loma, Loma, Loma men, will take men and women, 16 male, 16 female from all the tribes. We form their companies. We we'll go register the company. We we'll go to the bank. We we'll guarantee the loan for them. Letter of credit. They will bring the rice. They will sell the rice. They're not saying it's, 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 it's enough. We live in our own damn country. We ain't got no, we ain't got no money. Every, only the foreigner got money in our, in our country. We have to change this nonsense. Take the damn economy and give it to our people. No, nobody coming to be president here. You can't be foreign for the, the people rich. We will not keep this system like that. We will destroy this system and build a brand new one. Enough is enough. We need economic ind independence.
You running for president? You run to Ghana? You running here? You go so that nonsense will not happen. Happen again? You not sign my damn contract? We will, we, we will not campaign for you. Let's go and take some calls there. Two hundred. Uh, 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 in fact, somebody just told me say the thing gone up now. The 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 the, the, the amount for last year was two hundred forty four million. We take a two hundred forty four million dollar market and give it to five people. Why? Why? Yeah. A two hundred forty four million dollar a year market. And give it to five people. Guess what? We we'll change that nonsense. We we'll take thirty-two librarians from the companies, give it to them, and go to the bank and guarantee. If the man made money tomorrow, you want to campaign against me that he damn business, but he's a librarian citizen. That's a librarian business. You want if we make you million, 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 million here, you cost my mind, you cost my power. I say that your damn business. All we know, we we'll make you rich. Cyril Ram Ramaphosa. The current president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, former chairman uh, of MTN, one of the largest, if not the largest, mobile te telecom uh, company on the continent. Cyril Ramaphosa. You know how he became a millionaire? The man worth over $500 million. When South Africa, when apartheid was tuned down, when Madiba came to power in 1994, he introduced an economic, an affirmative economic policy called the Black Diamonds Program. Black Diamond. Are you listening, boy? The Black Diamond Program. Nelson Mandela said, we want to ensure, we know the white people control the economy, but we have to make some black people rich. We have to begin this process. The, the government began to empower black entrepreneurs. Cyril Ramaphosa is one of the beneficiaries of Nelson Mandela's affirmative economic action program called the Black Diamond Program. You think we know what we're talking? You think we know what we're talking? We know. We, we can read. We have knowledge. We will change the damn economy. We will make Liberians rich. So that when I want to be president in the future, I will not go to Ghana to go beg a Ghanaian man for money. I will not go to Nigeria. I will go to a Liberian man. I say, my man, we 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 running. We brought the economic policy policy. Today, you're millionaire. You support the political process. Boy, we have to change the damn country. Sure. We 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 just poor in our country. We barely buffer. We are in government. We steal small small money. The foreigners take all the damn all the damn money. Let me tell you something. That corridor from the Gabriel Tucker Bridge right there from Vatan going to Freeport. Do you know how much business is done right in that? How much trade is done right in that corridor? Over seven hundred million dollars a year. That was going to be me right down there, Costa. Yes. Over seven hundred million, eight hundred million million dollars a year, and it's owned exclusively by the foreigners. Sure. I ain't got no problem with the foreigners, but Liberians must participate. We will take, we will in our economic policy, our social contract. No Lebanese, no Indian, no foreigner should do retail business in our country. Let me repeat myself. You will sign that contract. No foreigner will do retail business. Our, our man and our brother and sister, they, the people go to India, they bring the goods. They go to China, they bring the goods. Then they turn around, they're doing retail business again. You, you, you wholesaler, then you're doing retail. When my, my water, my water, why they sort of do retail? Then you're doing retail business? You will sign that damn contract. No foreigner shall do retail, shall engage in retail activities in our country. Okay. Cause Let's go to the lines and take some calls. You don't hear about nonsense, eh? Wow. Yeah, let us see if we can take some call on the line. Do you have Mohamed? Oh, he left the line, Mohamed from Johnsonville. But I'll take somebody on this uh, line here quickly. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Where are you calling from? Yeah, go ahead, Alaji. Uh, I have morning. Morning, my brother. I'm going to show a lady of the video. But for me, I'm very much, you know, disappointed in the way you reached. You don't have to be full, but I'm already. No, let's forget it. No, I'm not disappointed in the opposition at all. No, I'm not. No, we will not do that. No, listen, 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 listen. We are not disappointed in them, my, my brother. Hey, what, whatever you think you understand, we don't have a problem. We are good. The CPP, I am very happy that they've signed the agreement. So there's no issue. Uh, I will not let you even talk further on that particular matter. Let's end it there. Let me tell you something. 
Yeah, let's end it there. We're, we're, we're not disappointed. We are happy. We are happy that the CPP has signed the, the, the agreement. And now we have to ensure that that agreement sticks. That they hold together. We are not disappointed. But we will also make demands. As, as I was saying, Boaka, as I was saying, go to Ghana, my man. Ghanaians are buying properties worth millions of dollars. Huh? Ghanaians, they have money. What kind of nonsense there? How can I live in a country where I cannot be a millionaire? What kind of nonsense is this? Because some idiot in power feels intimidated and in, in, insecure. So he denies me of my birthright to benefit from my own country's resources. What kind of nonsense is this? We have to change the damn country. And this is what they do. You know what they do, Baka? When they're in power, they give the businesses, they, they give the contracts to the foreign people. When they leave power, then they complain about, hey, oh, the country, this, you got no money. And so, that's what they do. When they come to power, that's what they do. They empower the foreign people. Today, John, we are doing business with who? And I Zidani them. Hello, Baka? Yes, yeah, Zidani. Z Zidani. Bitter. Those are the people John Weir is making, making rich. The foreigners. It did not begin where we are. It is a system. It is the way it is. It is the way it is. We, we, we bring the foreigners and make them rich. They are not smarter than we are. But it is our politicians that, that do this. Because they are so damn wicked. And they are small minded. And they settle for the little kickbacks. And they make the foreigners super rich. We will not accept that nonsense beginning 2023. I want to see my brother, uh, 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 what's his name, Aaron Nella. I want to see Mo Ali become a multi-millionaire. I want to see that happen. We have to make money in our own damn country. They, they prefer going to the Lebanese to go ask them and they need to go ask them for their holiday or their weekend. Because they don't want to make their brothers rich. Let's take some calls there. We'll change your country. By force, yeah, by fire, yeah. by force. Yeah, good morning, my brother. Yeah, this is uh, Samuel Gray in the calling from China. Look, Costa, I am a lot. But uh, I have like, something like uh, two or three issues that I just want to in a race on what you are just saying. Number one, you know there are some guys that are in leadership. They run, they can see some of the relatives into businesses, you know, and they are earning a lot of money every month. They don't take this money to say, let me help my cousin to, to invest in this business, to get this business growing. I give you an example. I'm in China here. For, for the length of time I've been in China here, this is what the Chinese are doing. Chinese rally the red Chinese, they build Chinese up. I, I don't want to call a name, but I was doing like some businesses in Liberia. But I tell you, because that sometimes I will feel like my brothers and sisters are very devilish. They say, are they helping you to blow your business up? They will be the one to, to, to diminish your business. So sometimes it comes back to you as an individual, as well as you invest in this business. In or I should put them. Shut up, it comes to our little brother and sister. The elderness and jealousy in Liberia is too much. We tell you to have to shut up jealousy. Let you shut up. And you imagine, I guess you can't take that material in Liberia. I just supply boost to the to, to, to things, to take that things in Liberia. But when you carry the boost, the money, the money bring out, what kind of a lot of it says, shall pay, shall pay. You give them the boost. And you, you begin to learn behind it from your own work and you're thinking like, I'm not a mess. Alright, bro. So when I'm actually going to say it, let me tell you this a minute first. Uh, uh, hey, okay, I beg you, please. Please, don't think people are... Yeah, let's, let's take somebody else, my, my brother. You've made your point. Yes. Good morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, you may call it from. This is Isaac Waters, I'm calling from Finland. Isaac, good, good, good morning. Thank you. Uh, you see, the issue is that Costa maybe have to explain more to people who don't understand what is social contact, contract. Sorry. In the West, this is what politicians do. But because in Liberia, people are not used to having big things, so the politicians only offer them t-shirts, 
building, paid like training, and maybe paying tuition or few of their kids. But here in the West, when the election is coming, people are curious to know what is in there for them. The farmers are interested in what the politicians are going to offer them. The trade unionists are, are interested in what is in there for them. And they have the right to demand that if I gave you my support, you are going to advocate on my behalf for this and that. So it is a norm phenomenon to demand that if I'm going to give you my support, this is what I expect of you, that you are not going to betray me. If you think about the past election in the U.S., why did Trump won the presidency? Because people who were against immigration, they rallied for Trump. They went behind him. And that was what he built his platform on. So it's, it's why it is that we should always be demanding t-shirts and pay black drinks. We, we, we have to demand something big, you know? I mean, it is our right. No. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, hold on the back. I, I, I need to make a point. You know, the brother from China, you made a good point. Just that we had to let you go, unfortunately, because you were talking too long. Let me say something to you. The government of Nigeria, back in the 90s, when Sunny Abasha, the brutal detector Abasha, was president, head of state, he was corrupt. He was bad. He did a lot of things. The Nigerians discovered oil in their country in the 1950s <clears throat> in the Niger Delta region. If I'm not mistaken, it was River State or somewhere. The first discovery of oil in Nigeria was made in River State. Somewhere there. In the 50s. Their oil had always only been exploited by the white people. Foreign companies. In the 90s. The Nigerian government made a conscientious decision to indigenize the Nigerian petroleum sector, hydrocarbon sector, to allow Nigerians to participate. They, 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 they came up with a number of, of oil blocks and said these oil blocks would exclusively be given to Nigerian citizens. Okay. That's what they did. And that affirmative policy to indigenize the Nigerian hydrocarbon sector or petroleum sector is what created Africa's richest woman Florencio Alakeja she's a billionaire Boakai. this woman got I think two or three oil blocks Boakai. that's what she got she doesn't even have a bachelor's degree she's a designer and she was a secretary. This woman got these oil blocks. She went to a company called Texaco. Texaco. It's an oil company. Texaco. She got Texaco to come in as her financial partner. She had the oil blocks. She did not have the money. Of course not. She, was, she didn't have money. Texaco came in. She gave Texaco a minority stake. I believe she gave them 40%. Boy, guy. In, she had two oil, oil blocks. The Nigerian government made it possible for a woman who did not even have a bachelor's degree, a secretary, to get two oil blocks. Texaco became her partner. And Texaco got brought the, the capital. They developed the oil blocks. Long story short, Florencio Alakaja is today the richest woman on the continent. I mean, you, you're probably talking about Isabel Dos Santos, but we all know how she stole the damn money on a power president. But Florencio Alakaja got rich because the Nigerian government decided they wanted to indigenize the petroleum sector. Femi, Femi Otidola is another successful example of the Nigerian government's plan to indigenize the petroleum sector. Femi established Forte Oil. He, he later sold the company, but Femi is one of the richest Nigerians alive. Tons of other Nigerians became billionaires and many, many, and, and multi-millionaires from that pro program. We can do the same thing in our country, Bokai. 
We can get oil companies or oil blocks to Liberian citizens who can go abroad and securitize those oil blocks and raise money and come back with partners and become rich. We can do that. If a Liberian man gets rich, why do you think he will carry the money? The money will stay in Liberia. That is what I want to see for my people. Liberian millionaires. Change the culture. We are too damn poor. We are too damn poor. Are we only good to work in uh, companies owned by foreign, foreign people? All the companies in the country owned by foreigners. And let me tell you something, brother. Let me say something to you. Do you know why? Liberians are so envious of one another and so jealous when you succeed? Here is why. It is because Liberians are so poor. When people are so poor and have no opp opportunities, when, one, when a few people are lucky to break free and succeed, everybody wants to tear you down, boy. It is the crab mentality syndrome because there is so little to go around that when you manage and you escape from poverty and you succeed, but here is how we can change it. We can change that culture. And it has to be led by the government, by the president of the republic. We can change that culture to make Liberians support other Liberians. We can make it about the country and not about the president. We can change that culture by creating more economic opportunities or creating an enabling environment, access to capital, technical guidance to Liberian entrepreneurs for them to succeed. And we can use him as a model and say, look at John Brown. John Brown started five years ago. Today, John Brown has this number of stores or this number of employees working for him. John Brown has that factory. John, John, John Brown has a fishery. John Brown has an, a, 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 we can do that. And when the government begins to promote like Liberians, not just by giving them opportunities to get rich, but by promoting them, by highlighting them and saying, this man has succeeded. Let the president of the republic encourage Liberian citizens to support other Liberians and the president should do it by lead, leading by example. Wakai, the people need leadership, Wakai. If they see a Liberian president who promotes Liberian businesses, they see a Liberian president who encourages Liberians to do business with other Liberians, who, who does business with Liberians, the government that promotes li li Liberian businesses, we want an economic policy whereby our social contract will say, if a Liberian man provides a quality service or sells quality goods at affordable prices, the government shall not buy that goods from foreigners. Hello, brother. We want in our social contract that if a Liberian man has an IT firm and he has competent IT professionals working for him, and the government needs the specific IT services provided by that firm. No Indian-owned company should participate in that bidding process. No Ghanaian company should participate in that bidding process. No Nigerian or South African company should participate in that process. That company, that contract should go exclusively to a Liberian firm. Sure. That is what we want in our social contract. You will sign that damn contract. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If a Liberian man sells stationery and the government wants to buy stationery and they buy millions and millions of dollars of stationery every year, you will not go to an Indian store to buy it. But you know what that will do? It will force the Indians and the Lebanese who own the stationery stores to become partners with Liberian business people. Mm. And people know this is true. This is something we are passionate about. My friend Rodney C, we all would discuss this thing all the time. We need Liberians to get rich. But every day we just let up, boy, let up, boy, we finish it. But we want to ensure that 2023 is the day it begins. The day we take power. If, if the government wants to buy stationery, they will not go to a stationery store owned by an Indian man. If the government wants to buy drugs for the hospitals, they buy millions of dollars worth of drugs every year. They will buy the drugs from a Liberian drugstore or a Liberian pharmacy. And the government will provide the capital through the bank. Line, line of credit for the Liberian business people to access the capital to be able to bring in the drugs to supply to the government. Enough is enough, Bokai. Enough is, in, is enough. The damn thing must come to an end. Wicked people, they come to power. They suppress the rest of the people. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me say something to you. We will still do business with the foreigners. We will have them in the country. 
But there will be certain aspects of the economy that should be completely reserved for Liberians, Bwakai. The government spends over $150 million a year, Bwakai, on procurement of goods and services. Over $150 million a year, Bwakai, on the procurement of goods and services. They buy stationery, they buy cars, they buy uh, 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 all, kind, all kinds of things. Petroleum products, this, that. You know who they buy those things from, Bwakai? They buy them from foreigners. They buy them from foreign. Where does the profit go? The profit goes abroad. That is the reason why our banking sector cannot grow. Because every year, the profits these foreigners make, they don't keep the profits in our banking system. One of the things we'll put in our social contract in order to boost, to enhance liquidity and expand the balance sheets of our local banks and our banking sector, we want, and, uh, we want you to commit to ensure that there will be a, an export proceed surrender of about 50% and there will be uh, uh, the proceeds from trading, we want 50% of those profits kept in our commercial banks. Somebody's asking, what do I mean by export proceeds or random? What do I mean by proceeds from trading? That means, if an Indian man sells goose in Liberia and makes $5 million a year in profits, we want the government to say that that man should surrender 50% of his 5 million, which is 2.5 million, to be kept in our Liberian banking system. They do it in Ghana. They do it in every other country except Liberia. We will not allow that Indian man or that Lebanese man to take all of his profits out of our banks. Because we want our banking sector to have more, the greater liquidity in the banks, the more money the banks will lend. And when the banks lend money, it will create more economic opportunities in the, in the country. You think we're stupid? We, we have been reading. You will sign that contract. Look at companies like Golden Verulium. Com companies like B-Mountain extracting our diamonds and our, and our gold. Where do they keep? They take all their profits abroad, Bwakai. They take all the, 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 the gold sector alone in the, in the country. About, same doesn't told me the other, other, other day. The data is 200 something million dollars a year in, in gold. Every year. Where does the profit go? The profit goes abroad. We want to ensure that 50% is called ex, uh, 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 export proceeds of so, so, so right When you export goods out of our country, you sell. What are their natural resources or whatever? 50% of your profits should be kept in Liberian banks. 50%. We're not stupid. We've got to change this damn country. We know what we want. You make that policy. policy. How, where does the money go? These funds go through the banks. So how do we track it? If John Brown is importing stationery, not John Brown, but Indian man, call one Indian, Indian name. Let's say Raj Singh. Raj Singh stationery store on Kerry, Kerry Street. Did $5 million worth of business uh, uh, in the previous year. And on that $5 million worth of sales, they made a profit of, of about $1 million. Now, if Rasin wants to wire money out of the country through the bank, Rasin will have to state the purpose of the funds that he sent there. Of course, we know. But here is the thing how we can track it. If Rasin is wiring money directly to a supplier, who, a company that supplies him station, stationery, we, we, we will know because we, we, the company's address and the company's name will be on the transfer, on the transfer document, the transfer paper. He will have to state the purpose. So we will know that Racing is ordering. If he wants to order stationery to restock, it's okay. Then he can send any amount of money. But if Racing is simply transferring money to his bank account, then we can control that. We can ensure that fifty percent. So he can. The only time he will be able to send an unlimited amount of money is when he's ordering supplies from his from the company that so, that supplies him. But if he simply wants to transfer all the money to a bank account abroad, we will not allow it. 50% of his profit. If you have these policies in place, if 50% profit a surrender, what are the export proceeds or what are the trading proceeds, you surrender 50% of these proceeds to our local banks. Here is what that here, here, here is what you will have, Walker. The banks will have greater liquidity. The banks will have more money. We will not have a shortage of USD, Walker. But the reason why the banks have no money is because the foreigners who control the economy do not keep their profits in our banks. They take all the profits abroad. 
We want to yeah. ensure that a President Boakai or a President Cummings or a President Ure or a President Kanga Lawrence will ensure that they have that policy on the books that you cannot take all of their profits abroad because whose money is it? It is our money. You made that money in our economy, so it is our money. You will keep some of that money in our damn economy. You think we're stupid? Well, we're not stupid. We're not just talking and muya muya jada jada. We are talking serious transformative economic poli policies and programs that can change the economic and social landscape of our country. And for once, make our people prosperous. We're not stupid people. We're not stupid people. We'll close here for for today. We'll close here. But you're too playing for? Y'all, y'all, you're too playing for? If John Brown wants to transfer money, he profits. The, the transfer rate, he will have to pay interest on his own money to transfer it out of the country. If Boca wants to just transfer money out of the country, he will pay a very high fee. You know what that fee is? It's called a deterrent fee. We don't want John Brown to transfer all his damn money out of the country. Huh? So, we're not going to let you, if Boca get $1 million in a, in a bank, he just won't go transfer all the money. Boca, the fee will put on that damn money. To transfer $1 million, you will pay a hefty fee to transfer that money because we want to discourage you. Maybe we'll say you'll pay 10%. Do you know what it means? Tell a man to pay 10% 10, 10 to transfer your own money. That is what? 100,000 US you'll pay on 1 million. Or we'll take, pay 5%. That's 50,000. It will make you weeks up, Walker. You will, you will never even want to transfer the money. But if it is business money, if you are transferring money to procure goods or to reorder, you will not pay that kind of fee. You will not pay that kind of fee. Because we want you to keep the money in our banks. We want to enhance liquidity. We want to grow the balance sheets of our various commercial banks. Once they have greater liquidity, the banks got more money on their balance, balance sheets. The bank will be able to lend more money to new businesses. One economist said one, one time, money is like menu. When you sprinkle it, things grow. That's what money is. It's, it's like fertilizer. We know what we are talking you will pay a huge fee to transfer money out of the out of the country. We will put those things in our economic policy. Oh, these are things we're not hearing politicians say. When was the last time you heard your politicians say these things? Hello? Can anybody please tell me, Barker, when was the last time you heard politicians articulating these policy ideas? Please tell me, Barker. Pa perhaps you did. Perhaps I haven't. No. Can somebody please tell me when was the last time you heard a Liberian politician articulate these policy ideas? Or to tell you, made me president. Made me, made me president. When I become president, I will change the country. Don't tell me that damn non non nonsense. I want policy ideas. Tell me what you would do with the country. One of the things we want to see, we want to see a moratorium place on concessions. We've been doing concessions since hell was a pop. Hell not grow old today, rusted with gray hair all over. The concession model has not worked in our country. You concession out the timber field. You concession out the diamond fields. You concession out the iron oak mountains. It has not worked. We want you to place a moratorium on concessions until we can recalibrate -cali -cali and transform the entire con concession model. Now we will do equity participation. We will use the Botswana model. The Botswana model. When Botswana gained independence in the late 1960s, I think it was 67 or, or, or so, their GDP per capita was $70. That means if you divided the country's, uh, the country's GDP among the population, each Botswana citizen was going to get $70. Fast forward from that time to now, from independence, $70 GDP per capita at independence to, to today. Botswana has a GDP per, per capita, one of the highest in Africa, of over $8,000. If Botswana is worth $8,000, you know what a Liberian is worth, Baka? You know what you are worth in your economy? $456. Botswana. Because Botswana realized the foreign diamonds, they had diamonds. You know what they did when they discovered diamonds a few years after independence? They said, we will not use diamond resources to pay traditional, to pay silver servants, to buy to, to buy a plane ticket for, for government visa travel. We will form something else. This is what the Botswana did. Oh, man, let me tell you the Botswana model, man. DPS went to Botswana. The world's largest diamond mining companies. The larger diamond mining company, they went to Botswana. They told the government of Botswana, we want access to your diamonds. 
Botswana said, no problem. We'll give you access to our diamonds. But here is what we want. We own the diamonds. You bring the expertise and the resources to, to develop the diamond fields. So here's what we'll do. We want 50% equity. I mean, the government depends on nothing. But they say, just because we own the diamond field, we want 50% equity. You don't get all 50, 50%. You don't test our diamond. Okay. The PS agreed. Then, then, then you know what? You know what the person the, 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 the person going to them? He said, You will not use your company near your DPS. We will form a joint company owned by us. They formed a company called Debswana. The D E B comes from DBS because DBS is spelled D E B E E R S. DBS. And then the Swana comes from Botswana. So they formed a company. They took the, the first three letters from DBS. And the last four letters from Swana, from Botswana. So they formed a company called Debswana. Debswana. Debswana is the company that exports. And then the government said, look, you will not just take the diamonds out of here and, and export the diamonds. You will do something called in, in economics, they call it local beneficiation. Local beneficiation means to maximize the economic benefits or the commercial benefits of uh, of, 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 of your activities so that more and more local people can benefit. That's what they call local beneficiation. We need to have a local beneficiation policy in our country. Value addition. Oh man, what kind of, what, what, you, 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 what, 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 you, we're talking economic policy, policies that have transformed other countries. We will borrow the Botswana model. Local beneficiation. What, what does that mean in practical terms? Botswana said to the BS, now that we have formed a company called Debswana, our need that, your owner need that too, we get 50 50%, 50 you get 50 percent. Here's what we are going to do. Every diamond you take out of our, our soil, you will you will wash it here, that that jobs. You will cut it here, that jobs. You will polish it here, that jobs. You see those steps? They call it value addition. You are adding value. The value chain is going through the value chain. You watch it, you polish, you cut it, you polish it in Botswana. Local beneficiation. Then the Botswana government said, We want to do something. We want to ensure that the diamond money here will not just be eating, eating it. We will create some, something called a sovereign wealth fund. They call the sovereign wealth fund the Pula Fund. P U L A. Pula Fund. Go look at it, look it, look it up. The last time I checked, the Pula Fund had over six billion dollars sitting in it. Hello, Bokai. Six yeah. billion dollars sitting now in the Pula Fund. And you know what they did? They introduced a policy called intergenerational equity. Now we're talking economic policies and social policies. And we're not talking. About, I'm studying public policy in school. That's what I'm studying at Wilmington you know, University. But before I even sat in that classroom, we were reading these these things. Botswana introduced a policy called intergenerational equity. Let me explain what intergenerational equity means. This generation and the future generation, that means the current generation has to ensure that they effectively and prudently manage the resources today so that the future gen generation is not shortchanged. So that tomorrow when our children come, they will have something left for them. So the Botswana government said we have to prioritize a policy called intergenerational intergenerational equity. That means the generation today will not eat all so that the generation tomorrow will not have something. This is what we are talking about, folks. Mm. This is what we are talking about. Sound economic policies and programs that can transform the Liberian people's lives. We're not talking joke yet. We're importing 240 million dollars worth of rice a year. We need to, in a five year, in five years, we need to say, in five years, we will not import a single grain of rice in, Li in, Li in, Li in, Li in Liberia. We will produce rice in the country. How do we do this? We can revitalize the agriculture bank to finance me mechanized rice production in the country. We can go to India and China and bring them with their technical expertise to work these farms. And we can produce rice in our country. What will we be doing by doing that? We will be creating thousands of jobs in the, the clearing of the land, the, cult, the cultivation, the harvesting, the milling, the processing, and we will be creating Liberia million, million years in the, in the process. We're talking about transformative economic ideas. This is Henry Costa 2.0. We're not here for mediocre ideas. 
If you are a small thinker, go sit down one, one side. We want bold, radical, revolutionary ideas to change our country. So you shall sign that damn contract. God bless you and have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye-bye.